Ed and I met about 13 years ago and we were introduced by mutual friends and it was just a friendship or a very, very casual friendship. I met Jeff a couple of years after I got divorced and we met through a mutual friend. Um, it started off very kind of casual. Didn't think I was meeting a life partner. Um, and we just kind of grew closer until I wound up moving in and I decided this is somebody that I want to spend the rest of my life with. It's by far the best relationship that I've ever had. We were together about seven years and he broached the subject of always wanting to have children and never thought that it was possible. You know, you have to understand we're of a generation where gay men didn't have children. Um, you just, it was one of the prices you paid, I guess, for being gay. And um, so it's a fairly new phenomenon. I've wanted to have kids my entire life. Um, ever since I was a, a little kid, I've always wanted to be a dad. And uh, when I realized that I was gay, back when I was a kid, gay people didn't have kids. It just was unheard of, never happened. As society and as uh, medicine progressed, and gay people were able to have kids, it came back again and I really, really wanted to be a dad. I always wanted to be a dad. My partner, Ed, was not a big fan of having kids. I couldn't strong harm him into doing this. Um, this wasn't the type of thing that I could wear him down until he finally agreed, only because raising children is a decision that both parents have to make. So we went out to dinner and I was sitting here, Ed was sitting across from me, and at the table to uh, my left, out of Ed's line of sight, was a couple about our age that had three adopted children. And Ed could just sense the, the sadness and, and the emptiness in it in my eyes, there's just a longing to be a dad. I don't know at what point it happened, but I went from somebody who really didn't want to have another child to somebody that suddenly wanted to have babies and was scared to death. It was an incredible challenge that we had to overcome to figure out how we would do this. Ed is always the one that is my better half, and I don't use that term lightly. Uh, we complement one another in every single way. When the two of us put our minds together, and they're very different minds, when we put our minds together, we can overcome anything. We met with a surrogacy agency in Boston that's specialized in gay couples. They said, did you choose a fertility clinic yet? <laughs> And we were, um, we were like, um, no, we thought you guys were going to take care of all this. But uh, so they gave us the name of two different fertility clinics, one of which being RMACT. Um, we had a Skype interview scheduled with both of them. And after the Skype interview with Dr. Landeris, um, we felt really good about, about going with uh, the one in Connecticut. RMACT it was. And... Um, so now we had a surrogate, we had an egg donor. Uh, our surrogate was from Virginia, the Richmond area, and our egg donor um, was from New Jersey. A lovely young lady, already had a child of her own. She was a foster mom, married. Our surrogate already had a child of her own. We were scared, we knew that this was beyond our, our area of expertise, and we got what we felt were the best people involved to help us achieve this dream. We found that um, on the advice of the surrogacy agency, there's just, it's always better to have your, your egg donor and your surrogate um, separate. The surrogate came up in December of 2013, and that was our first time actually going to RMACT, and we met with a, a social worker. It was one of those things that, as you're going through it, um, it didn't seem that valuable, but a lot of the things she said to us at that little one hour therapy session have so many times over the last two years rung back about managing expectations. And as soon as you think that something's gonna be a certain way, it winds up being something completely different. That is also when we met um, Nora, 
who was kind of, we used to, we used to call her our, um, our baby concierge <laughs> because she would be the, the one that, she would be our, our contact go-to person. Also, um, Jill was the person who um, scheduled everything. She was, she was great too. Actually, there, there isn't anybody that we've dealt with at our MACT that wasn't great. This is not an advertisement. I don't give praise where it's not due. I have very high expectations and they exceeded all my expectations. Actually, Jeff has higher expectations than I do and they exceeded his expectations. So um, they just, they were great. There's not one thing that they did that um, I could say they could have done better. And we got pregnant in March of 2014. At that point, um, we were, I was in a state of shock. Jeff was thrilled. Dr. Leonduras was very good about telling us, you know, there's a 80% chance of this and a 20% chance of this, and this could happen and this could happen. And the boys were born September 4th, 2014. I made very clear to them just how grateful I was to everyone that we met with. To Mark, to Nora, and to Jill, who were our three main contacts. But we made the best decision. Um, and. I think that they all know just how grateful we are.